This is the Catholic Daily Journal for Friday, May the 31st, 2019. It's the feast of the visitation of Our Lady to her cousin Elizabeth in Luke chapter 1, verses 39 through 56. Elizabeth is the wife of Zechariah, who is a priest in the temple. She's the mother of John the Baptist, and Scripture tells us that she was old enough to be beyond the age of bearing children. But then about six months before the Annunciation on March the 25th, probably sometime in the late fall, she found herself pregnant. And this was a big deal at the time. Oddities and exceptions to the norm were not typical, and they were generally unwelcome. Still, the young woman Mary, who was newly pregnant, got the news that her cousin had had this miraculous pregnancy. So she knew something about miraculous pregnancies, and so right at the end of her first trimester, Mary calls up the Uber donkey, or the, maybe the Lyft donkey, we don't have the detail of that, and hightails it 20 or so miles off to see her cousin. The spiritual meaning of the feast is broad. There's something to say about hospitality, about putting the needs of others above ourselves, of personal humility, about family, about motherhood in general. There's also something to say about the Lord preparing the way and about the unexpected. And of course, the actual meeting between the women is the highlight. And that's where Mary famously says her Magnificat, my soul magnifies the Lord. John the Baptist leaps in his mother's womb when Jesus in the womb of Mary appears. Even more sermons come to life. There's something to say about children in the womb. There's something to say about John the Baptist, about Mary's humility, and so on and so on. It's a lovely feast, and we should all take a moment to read and reread Luke chapter 1 today. Today is the birthday in 1852 of Julius Ricard Petrie. He was a German biologist working for a bacteria specialist named Robert Koch. He had to prepare a lot of bacterial cultures, and so he sat down and thought through the very best way to do that. And from his thought and his experiments, we have the Petri dish, a round glass or plastic dish about two centimeters deep in which a very specific kind of agar growth medium can be cured. Then a small amount of whatever can be placed on it, and the dish can be sealed, and then the bacteria can happily grow with everything that it needs to thrive. It's not very dramatic or exciting, but Petrie's invention is on par with the guy who invented the test tube. He did the world a remarkable service, and it's worth remembering his birthday. Today is also the birthday in 1857 of Ambrogio Ratti, who would become Pope Pius XI. He was perhaps the first fully modern pope. He became pope in 1922 in the brief interlude between world wars. He was never pope of the papal states. He was the first sovereign of the Vatican City. And what's more, he was pope through the rise of Adolf Hitler in Nazi Germany, and he had to make some wildly unpopular and very difficult decisions. He inherited a world rife with the modernist heresy, which Pope Pius X had very cogently pointed out and condemned. He instituted the Feast of Christ the King in response to rampant anti-clericalism around the world. He saved lots and lots of Jews and condemned the Nazis as vigorously as any pope has ever condemned a non-Catholic politician. And still, he's remembered negatively as a weak pope who did, quote, nothing to the Nazis in Germany or the Mexican government during the Cristero War. In reality, he was a remarkable pope who had to blaze a lot of new trails in a very new world without most of the resources his predecessors had. He died in 1939 after 17 years in the chair of St. Peter. Finally today in 1930, the embodiment of American toughness was born. Clint Eastwood Jr. was born in San Francisco. He went straight to acting and got his breakout role in Rawhide. He went on to be the center of the Spaghetti Westerns and then Dirty Harry before taking up directing. He made Unforgiven, an American sniper. The man's an incredible actor an incredible director, a wildly successful producer, and he looks like he's tough as nails. He really and truly is an icon. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. Until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.